So this is my first solo video of 2022. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because one question I get asked a lot, especially by parents of children who are in high school or even in middle school is, how did you do that? What does that even look like? How did you get into engineering? How did you get into MIT? You know, what should I do? What are some tips or advice that you have? So I wanted to take some time to talk a little bit about my personal experience with um, becoming an engineer, with going to MIT and everything and just give you some background on it. So for anyone who doesn't know, I am a mechanical engineer by training. I got my bachelor's in mechanical engineering at MIT. I got my master's in mechanical engineering at University of Michigan. And my career has been really interesting so far. And I have several plans for my future career, but all of those plans are around sustainability and climate change resilience. So how did we get here? I really love telling this story because I think it's a really good example of how you just never know what life is going to bring. As much as you can make plans, you never know how things are gonna end up and you don't know what it is that you don't know. So as you build more experiences in life, as you learn more things, you change course because you have more information, right? You see other possibilities that are out there and life just takes you to the craziest places. So let's rewind to me in high school when I was applying to colleges. I had always done very well in school, so when it was time to apply to colleges, I wanted to apply to several Ivy League schools and then some other tier one um, and probably tier two, I don't know how they draw the delineations, but let's just say top schools. I had several top schools that I wanted to apply to. And I made that list of schools based on which schools had a good medical program or pre-medical program. Let me emphasize this. I never, ever, 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 ever wanted to be an engineer. More specifically, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon and I wanted to do Alzheimer's research. That was the path that I had planned out for myself. The summer before my senior year, when I was getting ready to apply to colleges, my mom was gracious enough to take me on a road trip to visit all of these schools that I wanted to apply to. Among them was Harvard. Now Harvard was the northernmost school on the road trip, so it was a long way. And my mom proposed that if we're gonna go all the way to Harvard, MIT is five minutes away, why don't we also go to MIT? And I said, because I don't wanna go to MIT. <laughs> Now, mind you, I didn't want to be an engineer. I didn't even have a good idea of what an engineer did. If you would ask me when I was 15, 16, 17, what an engineer did, I would have probably told you they build robots or something along those lines, which is eh, very, very partially true. <laughs> so I didn't have a good idea about it and I just knew that I didn't want to do it. And so I told my mom I don't want to go. I also had a really stereotypical idea of what MIT was like. I thought everyone there was like the stereotypical kind of nerd that you see on TV. I thought that everyone would be very awkward and it just wouldn't be a good fit for me. Now, it turns out everyone is kind of a nerd, but <laughs> but it's not at all what I envisioned or what you see on TV. So my mom makes me go to MIT because we already were going to Harvard. So we go, we do the campus tour and I absolutely fell in love with it. I adored it and I was completely floored, completely shocked that I even liked it at all. But I just loved the energy. Everyone was so, so passionate about what they were doing. People were genuine. People had this fun kind of quirky energy about them and it was kind of, it was just charming. It was a really cool place and there was so much cool innovative stuff going on there. 
And as someone who wanted to be a pre-medical student, I loved the research program. MIT has a really great undergraduate research program where you can start doing research the moment you get onto campus as a freshman. You don't have to you know, wait until you're a sophomore or a junior. You don't have to meet any particular requirements. If you're there, you can do research, which I thought was really cool. So unexpectedly, MIT shoots to the top of my list. I end up applying. And like I said, I was a great student. I had good grades, I had good test scores, AP classes, all of those academic boxes that you need to check off. But the thing about MIT, and I've learned this even more having attended MIT and also having become an interviewer for students who are applying to MIT now, I've come to understand what MIT is looking for to an extent. And to this very day, I believe the one thing that stuck out the most, because obviously everyone is incredibly intelligent and has good grades and test scores and all of that, the thing that I think made me stick out was this one particular essay that I wrote. And this essay was about how I wanted to do Alzheimer's research at the intersection of science and anthropology or sociology. I forget how I put it exactly, but I wanted to do research on potential cultural differences that might lend to variations in the occurrence of Alzheimer's. And I had all these ideas mapped out and I wrote this essay about it and it demonstrated exactly the kind of passion that you really see in a lot of MIT students. And to this day, I think that's what actually got me in or put me over the edge, which is funny because I'm not doing anything close to that, right? <laughs> So jokes on them. <laughs> So I started my freshman year at MIT the following fall. I'm taking all of my general requirements and I'm starting to take the courses that I need to take as a pre-medical student. I came to realize that I did not enjoy biology. I loved biology in high school, took it in college, and it just went into a direction that I did not enjoy. <laughs> I did not enjoy it at all. I ended up not liking biology, not liking chemistry, not liking chemistry lab, not liking organic chemistry. What else did I take? Intro to neuroscience. This is like between my freshman and sophomore years. Didn't like any of those courses, but I still wanted to push through. I still wanted to be a doctor. So for the summer after my freshman year, I had applied to this internship program where I would go and shadow a doctor in Spain. Applied to this program, I was admitted. I was really excited about it, really wanted to go to Spain, get hands-on experience, but I ended up not being able to afford the program. So at the last minute before summer is starting, I'm scrambling to find something I can do over the summer. I had a friend who I was speaking to about this and she said, hey, my mom runs this STEM camp for kids. I believe it was around eighth grade kids, eight, like eighth or ninth grade. Um, and she ran this STEM camp where they teach kids how to code in Python, they teach them robotics, chroma keying, and I think there were a few other components to it as well. She asked me, would you be comfortable being a counselor in this camp? Should I ask my mom if you can do it? Now, mind you, I had never coded anything in my life. I had never taken a software engineering course. I didn't know anything about robotics. I wasn't on any robotics team in high school. We didn't even have that at my school. We hardly even had physics. <laughs> So I was completely unqualified for this job. So what did I say? Of course I'll do it. Yeah, call your mom. <laughs> Let her know I will be there. Cause I'm desperate at this point. I need a job. So I'm like, I'll do anything. So my first sort of assignment at this camp over the summer was to teach kids to code in Python. Again, I've never done this before. So I have my computer in the back of the class. I'm literally taking an online Python class as I am also being the instructor. <laughs> 
for this course. <laughs> so I'm taking this course and I'm a very fast learner. So I'm absorbing it. I'll go through like a few lessons really quickly. I'll get it and then I'll go to the front of the room and say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. I would explain a concept, you know, come up with an exercise. We would do the exercise. I would help them with it. And then I would go back to my laptop, learn some more stuff and do it all over again. And that was how I taught Python. Did the same thing with the robotics part. And I actually don't remember a lot of the rest of what happened in that camp, but the Python and robotics stood out to me a lot or stand out in my memory a lot. So after this camp is over, I'm like, that was actually really fun. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed that. So I'm thinking when I go back to campus, I should take some computer science courses. I should take some more, you know, traditional engineering courses, but I didn't really know where to start because I never had interest in engineering before. So I go back to campus and I'm like, let me try this whole engineering thing out. Let me see what this is all about. So I took an intro to programming course. I took intro to design. I took an engineering math course. I even took a biological engineering course and just casted a wide net to see what I might be interested in. And I kind of got sucked into the, let me say traditional MIT culture in that just by being on campus, you're surrounded by people doing all of these different tech projects, um, building things, creating things, and it's infectious. So I joined clubs, I got into activities. So by the end of my sophomore year, after pretty much a full year of just exploring different things, I decided that I wanted to study mechanical engineering. And the rest is history. So I'm gonna leave that story time there because I don't want this to be excessively long, but essentially, that's how I became a mechanical engineer. And from there, I've had such a wealth of interesting experiences and again, have ended up somewhere different than I even expected to be when I was graduating with my mechanical engineering degree. And I'm looking forward to really where the rest of my life and career takes me. But that's just a little piece about how I got where I am today and a reminder that you never know what can happen. So definitely try new things, build new experiences and go with the flow. So that's it for today, y'all. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.